A call to action button is probably the hallmark and the sign of any conversion optimized page or landing page. If there's no button on there, then it's probably not conversion optimized. So in today's video, let's have a look at what makes a conversion optimized button. What kind of conversion design things should you know about to make a button effective? And also look at how you can design different types of buttons very quickly and easily using the Thrive Architect plugin. Hello, I'm Shane Melach from Thrive Themes and let's take a look at this simple but important element, the button. So right here I've got a demo page and let's just drop a button right here and we'll start by just looking at well, what makes a button. What makes a button a button, right? And kind of what this is composed of. I'm going to make it a bit bigger that it's, so that it's easier to see without me having to zoom in all the time. And let's look at some of the factors of a button. Basically, we have a box, a background box and some text inside, right? This is my button text. And a couple of factors that come into play for like the dimensions and size of this button are, first of all, the, the button size that you can set right here and the button width that you can set here. You can also make it full width. And then there's the text. So with the text, we have the line height and also the text size to some degree will influence the size of the button. And finally, we also have, so we have a, a total width of the button and we also have inside padding that will determine, so top and bottom padding especially will determine how tall the button is. So those are the basic kind of dimensions and right away, with what I've done here, you can see that one of the factors of a button is that we there's a certain kind of shape that we recognize as a button. We recognize as an interactable element. And I've made this button so tall now that it kind of starts losing that shape, right? It's in the, if I if we basically go further, uh, as soon as it's let's say taller than wide, it just doesn't look like a button anymore and it doesn't look like something we can click on anymore. So that's really the first thing. So if you look at our our default templates, if I just drop a button in here, they all have these this elongated shape. And that's the first thing we look at. We, we look for, and this is just because we've gotten used to it as web users, right? We look for this long rectangle with text inside and with a color. That's what we recognize as a button. Then in terms of conversion design, another really important thing is the visual hierarchy. Basically, how much does it stand out? So as an example, here we've got two buttons and one of them stands out because it's got a bright color. The text size is larger than the text, the text surrounding it and it's got space around it. And that makes it stand out. That gives it a clear visibility and puts it high in the visual hierarchy on the page. On the other hand, here we've got a little button that has same alignment as the rest of the text. It's kind of shy and small and gray. The text isn't any larger and that doesn't give it that affordance. It doesn't give it that signal that basically says click on me visually. So those are the very basics of what a button needs to stand out on your page and even just look like a button in the first place. So now let's use conversion design principles to further amplify this and further make a button stand out and make it effective. So first of all, if I select this button and I give it a color, so we want a bright color, obviously. And the first thing is for, if I'm using this on a desktop, one thing I want to see, or one thing that's an important signal for something being interactable is that it has a hover effect. So, so right now when I hover over this, nothing, nothing changes. And that doesn't give me a signal that this is clickable. So that's pretty important that we go into the hover state here and Usually on a button, what we expect is just that the, you know, basically same color, make it a bit brighter or something like this. We save that. And now, as soon as I hover on it, it becomes clear that this is clickable. However, this only works for desktop devices because only desktop devices have a mouse cursor in the first place. So there are a few other things that we can do to make this button stand out and give it this I'm clickable affordance. So the first is, if I select this again, I can give it rounded corners and I can even just very slightly rounded corners like this. And again, this is the, there's no real logic for this. It's just that so commonly buttons have slightly rounded corners that 
web users are used to that. So as a web user, we're just used to, if we see like this little box has slightly round corners, it automatically looks a bit more like a button. Another thing we can do is we can, we can kind of visually raise the button off the page. And there are a couple of ways to do that. Let me show you two of them. So the two most typical ways to do that are, first of all, we can add a bottom border. So if I go to borders and corners, I choose the bottom here and I will choose the same color and then make it darker. So now I want a darker shade of this, of this color. I'll make it uh, thicker as well. And let's, let me just make it a bit darker just to make it more obvious. So here, this little bottom border kind of gives it that it's as, as if you're looking at a, at an actual physical button, right? From perspective. And again, that gives it this signal of I can be clicked or tapped. And this works also on a phone screen, right? Even if there's no hover effect. So that's one of the ways we can lift the button off the page a little bit. And the second is of course, with a drop shadow. So we can add a shadow, an outside shadow pointing straight down, be 270. Uh, so 270 degrees is straight down. And then, and then really, you know, there's no, there's no hard and fast rule about how to do this. I mean, we can, we can go like this. This is quite subtle, like a subtle and large shadow works, but also a smaller shadow would work. It's really, um, yeah, it, there's no specific rule about how to do this. But as you can see right now, what we've created here with combining all of these effects I just talked about, this is now super obviously a button, right? And look at how much more obviously this is a button than just before when it was just a little square. So those are the few things conversion design wise that I would always look for to make a button super obviously clickable. Now, with that said, let's look at some more design capabilities and features in Thrive Architect that you can use to create more buttons. And I'm also just going to show you some like typical button designs and how to do them. So let's get started with, I'll, I'll drop another button here and right away. Let me just put more space around this and also make it really large. So again, we don't have to zoom in all the time. It's easier to see what we're doing. Also, just because it bothers me, I have to say, got to have title case in a button text or maybe all uppercase is also fine. But, but this here, no, we, we should probably change the default button text there. It bothers me a lot. Anyway, so we've got a button. Let me, let me show you how to do a ghost button. So a ghost button is, works like this. Let's choose a color first. I want, I want to choose a color and save a color. Let's make it uh, some nice shade of blue. Let's say like this, I'm going to save this blue to my palette because actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the, the button transparent, right? So it kind of disappears like this and I'm going to make the button text. So I'll go to typography and the button text, I'm going to apply this blue that I've just saved to, and then I'm going to give it a border that is again, the same shade of blue. And I'm going to make this border a bit, a bit thicker. What I basically, want is I want the border thickness to be about the same as the text, the, the thickness of the letters that, that will make it look balanced, right? And actually to show you, you know, what I mean, I think it's quite easy to see actually that if this is, if this is too thin compared to the, the text, it looks kind of weird. And especially if it's too thick, uh, then it looks really weird. So if we go like this, it just doesn't look nice anymore. So, I think I had it at three pixels. That was, that was pretty nice. Then it's about the same thickness as the letters in the text. And, and that's it. Actually, that's our default state for the ghost button. And then we've got a hover state, um, which is pretty simple for the hover state. What I want to do is I want the background color of my button to be a fill of this same color. We're always using the same color and I want the text color to be white. So I choose text, make that white. And there we go. That is the basic ghost button. So ghost buttons have become very trendy. The only downside to the ghost button is that it, it doesn't have the affordance that a, you know, that our, our, let's say perfectly conversion styled button has, right? It, it's stylish, but it's not as instantly recognizable as a button as some other designs are. And one of the things we can do here to make that more obvious is we can also add a shadow. So like we did before, you could also add a little drop shadow to make that a bit more obvious. 
All right, next up, let's do let's do an old school button. So we can, and by the way, before before I say that, uh, let's also XXL this one, and we have we have a ghost button as a template already, so you don't have to actually build it yourself. And we have a bunch of, of really cool templates here, but I just wanted to show you how to build them from scratch as well. So I'm going to choose the default template again and go title case again. And then next I want to show you an old school button. Uh, first of all, spacing again. Okay. So an old school button, how does that work? We have, I'm going to choose a color again, even though um, we're going to use a, a gradient actually, but I'll choose, let me try and find a nice shade of green here. Let's save that. And now, um, okay, where do we start? We can start with actually rounded corners. Old school button definitely has rounded corners like this. And it has a gradient, like I said. So we put a gradient on top where we go from this shade of green to, actually, let me point this the right way first, because I want it to be a vertical gradient here. So at the bottom, I have the color I saved. And at the top, I want a lighter version of that. Okay, so gradient that goes from slightly darker at the bottom to slightly lighter at the top. So that's our gradient. Then let's give it a border. Let me give it a border, um, which is going to be darker. So again, I pick the same green I've had before and I make it slightly darker, really just slightly because at the top of the gradient, it's already darker, right? So I don't want to have too much of a contrast there. And then I think this should be less thick like this. And I'm going to give it a bottom, I'm going to give it a second bottom border. So I'm going to use the same effect that we used here. However, I've already used up my border, right? Uh, an element can only have one border around it in CSS. So what I do instead is I use the shadow hack that we've talked about before in a separate tutorial. So I'll add a shadow that goes straight down and that has no blur. And if I remove the blur from a shadow, it becomes kind of like a, an outline. So here, once again, I choose the same shade of green and then make it darker, darker even than the border. And maybe like this. Okay. And then one more, one more effect is I'm going to give it another shadow, actually. Inside shadow, also straight down. I'm going to give it a little bit of a shine across the top. And these are all things to, to make it look skeuomorphic, to make it look like, you know, like an actual button, um, which this is why it's old school. A lot of people don't do that anymore in web design, but I want to show you how to do it anyway. So like this, maybe a bit less distance. This just gives it like a, a subtle little shine across the top. And then we need a hover effect, which here's a little trick for if you, if you've made a button that has, that has gradient, for example. So here we're using all these different shades of green. And what I don't want to do is I don't want to go and change all these shades of green. Uh, an easier way to do this is for my hover state. I'm just going to add a solid color on top, which is white. And I'm going to give it, you know, maybe 15% opacity. And so that lightens all the colors equally across the gradient. So even if I go and tweak something in the original state in the, in the gradient, I don't have to then go and tweak the, the overlay multiple colors and so on in the gradient there as well. So it just lights up the whole thing uh, very simply. So that is our old school button right there. All right, now let's do another one. Let's do a button that is pill shaped and uses, uses a bunch of features and things that we haven't done yet. So what do we do here? Um, once again, let's choose a you know, different color. We need to make them all look a bit different. Let me just save that because I'm going to use gradients and stuff here as well. And then we make it pill shaped. We want to, we want to give it rounded corners and we just need to give this a high enough value. At some point, it doesn't matter how high the number is. It's just going to be completely round on the edges like this. So I'm going to go with this. And then I'm going to add an icon. So that's a feature that we haven't used yet. I can click on add icon, which adds this icon into the button. And I can then click on the icon itself to get all of my icon styling options. So I'll choose the icon here, which could be, for example, a download icon. And what I'll do is I'll make this icon the same color as the background. And I'll 
then place a white background behind it. And I'll make it round. Same idea, right? Large enough radius just makes a circle eventually on a square. And then this doesn't look good yet. What we need is I'm going to link these paddings here. I'm going to increase the padding. And what I'm looking for is the right radius. You see there that at some point, I'm just eyeballing this. I could do the math on this, but I'm not going to. Um, at some point, this basically perfectly fits inside the rounding of the pale shaped button. That's what I'm looking for. I think it's not quite. It's probably something like this. Anyway, that's what I'm going for. So that's our icon. Then let's do two more things. First of all, another gradient. Uh, let's give this a bit of a funkier gradient. And here, I'm going to go like this. I'm going to make, just shift this color a bit like that. And then let's give it an outline again. And I'm going to use a shadow for this. So here's another shadow trick that you might remember from a different tutorial. Zero blur, zero distance plus spread makes a border. Once again, same color, and then I'll make this a bit darker. And this might even be a candidate for depending on what backgrounds you put this on. So if you put this on an image background or something, it could look really cool with you know a dark, transparent kind of border. And then for our hover effect, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to change one of the colors in the gradient because there's only two stops anyway. If I change one color in the gradient, that's the wrong one. If I change the other color in the gradient, there we go. So it's going to change all across. Or it's going to be, you know, enough of a hover effect like that. Okay, so that's our funky button. And then two more features I want to demonstrate here. First of all, if we select a button here, we can save it as a template. So if we go to styles and templates, save template, give that my demo button, save that as something. Now this template is available as usual as if you save anything as a template, you can go to content template. So you can drop the content template element and choose the template. But with buttons, you can also drop a button element. And in the style drop down here, the button I just saved becomes available. Now, this is the second time I'm recording this, so that's why we have two of these buttons here. But as you can see right here, I can choose the button with the same style, same hover effect and everything. It's not going to have the same size or the same text. So it only takes the styles, but then I can still, you know, I can still make the size changes so I can set the same size, same text as before, and it'll be exactly identical. So you can save and load your own templates like that. And also another feature we haven't looked at yet is the secondary button text. So what we can do is we can add a second line of text and First of all, you can see this looks a bit awkward, but, it, but here's how we first of all fix that and what the point is of this. Let's say we have a, you know, start your free trial button. And here we could write something like no credit card needed. This is something you may have seen before, right? Um, and we'd make this smaller, of course. We can also increase the line height a bit on both of these to change the spacing. And then the other thing I would also do is then add inside padding here to the button, probably more than that even. So something like this, right? And that creates a button layout with two lines of text. All right. So that is a crash course on how to create conversion design buttons and how to use various button design, saving and reusing features in Thrive Architect. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you learned something. And of course, as always, if you have any questions or feedback or suggestions of what else we should make tutorials about or what you'd like to learn next, just leave a comment below. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.